Math 1332, Chapter 11, Statistics, Section 2, Picturing Data, Video 2, Drawing a Pie Chart for Categorical Data. A pie chart is good for showing how frequencies of different categories compare to each other. And I think most of you know what a pie chart looks like. For example, uh, give me one second and I'm going to find a pie chart that we can look at. Got one here somewhere. Here it is. All right, so let's all take a look at this pie chart. This is from the textbook that we're currently using, so I'm not taking credit for this. The textbook is Mathematics in Our World by Sebecki, published by McGraw-Hill, 12th edition. Uh, this pie chart shows us what percent of shoppers bring their own bags a certain amount of time. 10% of the shoppers surveyed said they always bring their own bags. 39% say they never bring their own bags. 19% say frequently, and 32% say occasionally. So I think we've all seen pie charts before. But the bigger question is, how do we take raw data? In other words, the, the data that we get when we ask these people, how often do you bring your own shopping bags and turn it into a pie chart? And that's what this video is mainly about. All right, so let's go back to our whiteboard, please. Let's go back to our whiteboard. Thank you. And let's get started. Now I do have a list of steps on how to draw a pie chart by hand. But instead of going through all three of these steps and then showing an example, we'll look at step one, put it in play an example, step two, put it in play an example, and then step three. Step one, for each category, calculate the percent of the data set represented by the category. Do this by dividing the category's frequency by the sample size. In other words, the sum of all the frequencies. In this particular example, we have data illustrating the number of students at one campus who had a 4.0 GPA organized by class. 17 freshmen, 29 sophomores, 38 juniors, and 18 seniors all had um, GPAs of 4.0. To draw a pie chart, the first thing we need to do is calculate the percent of the whole that each of these represents. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many people were surveyed or how many people are in this data set. That's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is find the sum of the frequencies. And I've already added them up. If you add up 17, 29, 38, and 108, you get exactly 102. So, 102 people were surveyed, but we need to know what percent of the people were freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So, I'm gonna take this table, and I'm gonna add a couple of columns to it. One of the columns is going to be percent. You'll see what the next column is when we get to step two. We need to figure out what percent of these 102 people were freshmen. And according to the previous step, we can just take the frequency of the freshmen divided by 102, and that will give us a decimal. Um, how much should we round this to? That's a good question. Checking something real quick. Looks like we're going to be asked in this particular problem that I borrowed this from to round it to the nearest percent. 17 divided by 102 is 0 0.16666 repeating. If we were to turn this to a percent, we would move the decimal two places to the right. So it's going to be 16 point something. Actually, if we're going to round it to the nearest percent, let's go ahead and handle the rounding issues. We're going to round it to the nearest percent, then we need to round it to two decimal places before we turn it into a percent. To round it to two decimal places, we look at the third decimal place. That is five or greater, which means the number to the left of it will go up. So it actually won't be 16%. It will be 17% once we've rounded that up. So 17% for freshmen. Let's type that in the table. Now, you might be wondering, why is the percent the same as the frequency? The answer is it's not. It's just really close, probably closest to two decimal places as a decimal to the nearest percent, if you will, because our sum was so close to 100. So I'm not gonna be surprised if these percents turn out to be almost the same as the frequencies. There might be a little bit of fluctuation. In fact, they can't come out to be exactly the same because they would add up to 102 and they should add up to 100%, give or take one percentage point. All right, let's do the next one. For sophomores, there were 29 sophomores 
out of 102 total students. 29 divided by 102 is 0. Point, that's not right. 29 divided by 1.102 is 0. 0.2843 and some more. But if we're going to round it to the nearest percent, then we need to round it to two decimal places here. And looking to the digit to the left, to the right of the second, looking at the third decimal place, it is not five or greater, which means we will not round the eight up, which means the eight will stay the same, 0 0.28 or 28%. Let's put that in the sophomore row. I'm going to predict that the last one is going to be, let's see, 18% because I'm thinking that even when we round the percents are gonna add up to 100%. Okay, let's do the seniors, which is 18 out of 102. Let's see what that's approximately equal to. 18 divided by 102 is 0 0.1764 and then some more stuff. To get to the nearest percent, we round to two decimal places. To round to two decimal places, we look at the third decimal place. It is five or greater, which means we're going to round up the seven to an eight. So this is 0 0.18 rounded to two decimal places, or 18%. So our prediction came true. Not that that's that impressive, but when you round percents like this, there's no guarantee they will always add up to 100%, but in this case, we got a little bit lucky because they did. All right, so that's step one. We got to figure out the percents because we are going to write them in the, bar, in the uh, pie chart. All right, let's see what the next step is. To determine how many degrees are in the slice representing a category, find its percent of 360 degrees. A little bit of geometry here. Uh, most people know that in a circle, uh, let's not have a filled in circle, that in a circle, there are 360 degrees all the way around it. A degree is an angle measurement where if we take a line segment and another line segment that join at the end, then the degree measurement is a measurement of how much that opens up. And most people know that if you open up all the way around, that's 360 degrees. By the way, if somebody says they're gonna do a 360 and change their ways, no, they're doing a 180. 180 means you turn around and go the opposite direction. If they say, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna change my life, I'm gonna do a 360. Well, you do a 360, you're facing the exact same direction you started. You mean you're gonna do a 180. But there's 360 degrees in a circle and we now know what percent each category represents of that circle. So to find how big each slice is, we simply have to find that percent of 360 degrees. So let's start with the freshman. For the freshman, we need to know 17% of 360 degrees is what? Well, here's a flashback to section 7.1 about percentages. When you're doing a per basic percent problem, the equal becomes an is sign, the of becomes a times, the percent becomes a decimal, so 0 0.13. There's the 360. And normally you would put a variable here, but I'll just put a question mark. We just have to find 0 0.17 times 360, and we'll round this to the nearest, uh, Actually, it's only giving me one decimal place, so that's not too bad. We get 61.2 degrees. That will be our degrees, and that's going to be the next column in the table. So there's that. All right, all we got to do is the same thing for the sophomores, the juniors, and the seniors. And we've done percents in the past, so I don't think it's worth our time right now to do all of them. All I have to do is to take this 17% here and its corresponding decimal and just in turn change it to 28%, 37%, and 18%. If you do that, here are the results that you will get. The sophomore slice of the pie chart will be 100.8 degrees. The junior slice of the pie chart will be 133.2 degrees. And the senior slice of the pie chart will be 64.8 degrees. That's great, but how do we measure those? Well, if you're going to do it by hand, 
Step three, using a protractor, measure out each slice. Label each slice with its category and its percent. Now, I'm not expecting people to go out to buy a protractor, much less draw a pie chart by hand. I am gonna show you how I would do it, and then I'll show you how it looks both in your homework and on your test. Okay, so to draw this pie chart, let's start with a circle. It's a good place to start. I don't want a yellow circle. I always draw the slices starting at 12 o'clock, so going straight up. And then I always do the slices in the order that they are given. Uh, so we're gonna do the freshman slice first. Now, how do I know where 61.2 degrees is? Honestly, I don't know exactly, but here's what I do know. And honestly, you could do this as well. I know that at 12 o'clock on a clock, three o'clock, six o'clock and nine o'clock, are all 90 degrees apart. So if we start at the top with zero degrees and then go 90, 90 plus 90 is 180, and then 270, and then one more, one more trip around would make it 360, but that would be a complete circle. Didn't mean for all that to disappear. And the zero right there. So I know where my 90 degree increments are at uh, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock on a clock. But speaking of clock, there are more numbers. One and two, four and five, seven and eight, 10 and 11. And I'm really wondering how long I can keep referring to an analog clock, because uh, I'm not even sure if they teach how to read a clock in um, elementary school anymore. If anybody knows the answer, let me know. Uh, but the reason I wanted to stop at every hour on the clock is because each quarter hour is 90 degrees, but I just cut each quarter hour into thirds, which means if I cut 90 degrees by three, I get 30. And I can just count by 30s, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, uh, 210, after, after 180 is 210, 240, 270, 300, 330. Now, when I'm drawing a pie chart, I don't write all this out. I already know where these are. I'm just getting you inside my head. And now for the first slice, it needs to be about 61.2 degrees. Well, that's gonna be about, I don't want it to be red. That's gonna be a little bit past 60. Not a problem. So here's my freshman slice. I'm gonna open up a text box inside of there real small and just type freshman. And that is a 17%. There's the first slice. Now for subsequent slices, you have to be a little bit sneakier. For example, the sophomore slice is 100.8 degrees. So it's about 100 degrees, but I can't just go to 100. Why? Because my sophomore slice doesn't start at zero. It starts at 61.2. So to find where to cut off the sophomore slice, I have to actually find the sum of the first two. The sum of those is 161, Actually, it's gonna be exactly 162. So the sophomore slice, the second slice would stop at the sum of those, which is 162. 162 is about, well, if I imagine cutting this into thirds, 150, 160, 170, 180, 160 is about there and a little bit more is about there. And that's where the sophomore slice would stop. Sophomore, which was, 28%. To get to the third slice, to see where to stop it, I have to add up the first three. I can't just add, I just can't find 133, I've already passed that. I've got to go an additional 133 degrees, past the 61.2, past the 100.8, and then another 133.2. So if we add up those three, 61.2 plus 100.8, plus 133.2 is about 295 degrees. So my next slice is going to end at about 295 degrees, which is just a little bit under 300. There is our next slice, the junior slice, and that was 37%. And then for the last slice, you don't have to do a thing because there's only one place it could be right here. Here's the senior slice, it was 18%. So, as you can tell, constructing a pie chart by hand is 
a little cumbersome and a little time consuming, but manageable. And of course you could, you could put different colors in there if you want to. I guess we'll just do that because it's something to do. Freshman slice, we'll make that this color. The uh, sophomore slice, we'll make green. Again, now we're, now we're just being nitpicky, now we're being silly, but you know, might as well make it look pretty. The junior slice, we'll make blue. If I get out of the line, sue me. And the senior slice will make, what color are seniors? We'll say seniors are orange. Why? I don't know. Just the color I picked. All right, so this is a pie chart. My pen came up, which is why it was overlapped like that. That's better. All right, so tricky to do, but not impossible. Now for the big question, uh, especially for those of you who are in my class. What are you going to ask us to do in the homework? Well, what I'm going to ask you to do in the homework is going to rely 100% on the percentages. 17, 28, 37, and 18. Let's take a look at the homework and I'll show you what I mean. Let's see, share the homework. Here it is. All right, so here's the data set that we just used. And if you scroll down, you'll see there's a pie chart that's already defaulted 25% each. And there's two ways to adjust this pie chart. Uh, recall that the percent for the freshman was 18%. You can go over to the pie chart, grab an end and move it around. And if you notice the percents are changing, look in this table over here where the percents are. I can grab this and move it until freshman says 18. Then I can grab the end of the sophomore and the sophomore one was 37, I believe. Grab the end of the sophomore slice and move it and watch the percent under sophomore. See the freshman one's not changing. I locked it in, but the sophomore one is changing and I wanted it 37, I believe I said. Was it 37? Yeah, it was. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't 37. What am I on? The sophomore slice was 28. The junior was 37. All right, let's go back to that. Uh, let's see, sophomore slice was 28. So I'll grab the end of the sophomore slice and move it until the sophomore percent says 28. And then I can do the same thing with the junior, which was, I believe that was the 37. And the senior slice by default falls into place. Now you could do all that, or let me restore it. Because some people just like clicking and dragging, it's like a game. But if you know your percents, just type them in. 18%, uh, 29, no. How did I forget that so fast? I remember the junior was 37. You know, the older you get, your memory is the second thing to go. Guys, guess what's first? Not, not your brain, your, your hair. Uh, 17, 28, 37, 18. So, you know what? There, I got a picture of it, so I can't forget. All right, back to this. So in the homework, you can literally just type the percents once you calculate them. Freshman was 17, sophomore was 28. And as I'm typing them, notice that it's kind of adjusting the picture. Well, not anymore, because I'm over 100%. Uh, I'm getting there, 37 and 18. There, and it drew it, and we check it, and we go hooray. So in the homework, you can either click and drag or just type in the percents.